yeah, so that's episode one of HBO uh, this season, fourth season. Um, you'll see me there um, embedded with the Nigerian army, and then we got to do some other really, really wild things. Like I was actually able to get a couple of Boko Haram commanders to come out of the bush, meet at a neutral location, and I was able to speak to them about who they are and, and what they want. This is in a separate episode. No, it's in the, oh, uh, so this it's in, in yeah. the first one. Okay, yeah, I've seen yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, I mean, that's, you, <laughs> that episode, uh, I was talking to our producer, Charlie, here in the room, and uh, we were both commenting on how you just, the vices comes out swinging. Like, very <laughs> first segment of the very first episode is, holy shit, this is what's happening in Nigeria, you know? Yeah, and you know, uh, when people watch the episode, I guess like fair warning is it's it's a pretty graphic episode. It is. Right? And uh that that's deliberate and uh, you know, if I could uh indulge me to address it for a second, it, I purposely wanted that episode to kind of shock people and to be that graphic. I, I think it's important to remember that Boko Haram killed more people than ISIS last year. Mm. And you know, we're one of the very few outlets covering them. I'm the only, you know, person who's really been boots on the ground uh, in the fight against Boko Haram. So it hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but it's, uh, you know, created a massive refugee crisis, killed thousands and thousands of people, right. and it's ongoing. And that, and the people that are dying are people dying in Nigeria, Chad, and uh, Cameroon, and Cameroon, just right in that particular area of Africa. Yeah, it's mostly afflicted. This is very much a Nigerian born and bred organization. It is mostly afflicted those people in very recent months the conflict has started to metastatize metastasize and spread out to the other countries uh in the immediate area so when i was in in chad in jamaina for example uh we were we were there the very first suicide bombings they had in jamaina the capital of chad and that sort of represented another inflection point in the conflict where it's spreading across the region and and that should be worrisome to everyone why, why are we not paying attention to these uh, to these killings? Is it because it's Africa? I I, I think that's a, a partial answer, um, and I think there's some truth to that. Traditionally, um, there's not as much attention on Africa. It's also, frankly, access and proximity. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, no, Nigeria is trying to keep a lid on this problem. That's right. They keep journalists out of, of northern Nigeria, right? They're, yeah, you're absolutely banned from traveling to the conflict zones in the front lines. I was able to embed myself with a group of mercenaries um, and and sneak in that way and then kind of lily pad, hop to the Nigerian army and embed with them. But there was two Al Jazeera journalists who tried to go at the same time I did and, and they ended up in jail. So literally it's been impossible to document this conflict, uh, partially because of the Nigerian government itself. It doesn't want any attention on it. When, why don't they want attention? I mean, is it... You would think, okay, first thought is, well, perhaps they could uh, maybe get some support in one way or another militarily or money from places like the United States uh, to help stop this problem in their country. But then there's probably something else uh, going on as well. Yeah, I mean, they definitely want uh, assistance from the United States. Mm -hmm. um, that, and that is coming um, as a new administration has taken over in northern Nigeria. The, some of the trust that was broken during the last administration is, is starting to be repaired in a, in a very nascent way. So you're seeing a little more military assistance, a little more State Department assistance um, to address the conflict. Uh, but also, you know, frankly, there is an insurgency raging out of control that's ravaging northern Nigeria that's created a refugee crisis of over 2 million people. Um, that doesn't make the government look good, and it doesn't make it look like they can handle their business. And they're trying to manage the optics of this situation, um, which is also impossible because, you know, there's suicide bombings every other day, blowing people up in markets. So that's the, uh, that's the sad dynamic. And then, you know, the, the last thing I'll mention about uh, Boko Haram is that when I interviewed the Boko Haram commander and I the very first question I asked him was, how long have you been a member of Boko Haram? His answer was that he didn't want to be called Boko Haram anymore. Mm. Uh, in recent months, Boko Haram has partnered with ISIS, and he said he only wants to be referred to as the Islamic State of West Africa. So that also does not bode well for the future of the conflict. Mm -hmm.